Thermal tech calls their air cooler stuff air, so I'm not sure if by that they mean that the air which tries to go in is tough or the air it pushes through is tough. What? Hey everyone, Mukul here. So these air coolers were also sent to me by Thermaltake and I thank them for that. But as always, this review is going to be honest. I have the Tough Air 310 and 510 here and to my surprise, they are the exact same air coolers which have the exact same heatsink. The 510 just has an extra fan for the push-pull configuration. This means the naming could have been better and the Tough Air 310 could have been called 310 Plus or 310 Pro or 310 Pro Max. Because putting a new number on an air cooler with just an extra fan in the box could be a bit deceiving for many average consumers. No, I didn't call you an average consumer. I guess this is why the TDB coverage of both these air coolers just differ by 10 degrees Celsius. So if you are as smart as me <laughs> and you do keep a keen eye on the specs of the stuff before you buy them, well then you can't really go wrong here. Both the coolers come with all the mounts and parts except for the LGS 1700 socket, at least at the time of me making this review. But I'm pretty sure in the future stock it should be there. But anyway, check before ordering and don't blame me later that a random guy on YouTube said so, sure it should be there and it's not there. The back plate for both AMD and Intel is the same and is of plastic. There is also a thermal paste with an applicator inside the box. The Tough Air 510 will come with a fan splitter as it has two fans, so obviously four fan mounts. And the 310 has one fan, so no fan splitter and just two fan mounts. This honeycomb grid can be used to put the thermal paste in a pattern on the chipset, but I'm pretty sure nobody got time for that. Both the heat sinks have the same dimension and they have the same number of fins on them. Yes, I did count them. Not. The fins on both the heat sinks had no bends and were pretty much straight like me. And both of them have four copper heat pipes on the bottom, which are supposed to touch the IHS of the chipset directly. But unfortunately, the 510's heatsink top plastic cover on my review unit was loose. I guess it was just a faulty unit as on the 310 it was perfectly fine. But I do admire the design of these covers on the top of the heatsink. Uh, I mean, good job here, nothing tacky and no RGB shiz. One weird thing which came in the box was this warning note that says to run the water cooling system outside of a case to test it before you put it in the case. But I am not sure why this note didn't come with the Thermaltake AIOs which I tested and reviewed recently and is now coming with coolers which have names like Tough Air and not Tough Water, so I am not sure. I truly love the fans build quality and the color tone for the design on them. It looks rock solid and quite industrial which I personally like to see on stuff like this. I think and I am pretty sure these are the same Tough Fan 12 which Thermaltake sells separately too and they each cost about 1400 rupees or 20 US dollars. Well seeing these fans bundled bundled with these coolers kind of justifies the price these coolers have as they are some of the best performing static fans right now with a static pressure of 2.1 mm h2o there are rubber pads on all four sides of the fans and they are also on the brackets which attach to these fans the price of tough air 310 is 3500 rupees and tough air 510 is 4000 rupees which actually makes the 510 look pretty good for the price because of the two fans well, the installation process of these air coolers kind of reminded me of the recent AIOs I reviewed by Thermaltake and how similar the overall process was. The backplate for both the AMD and Intel mount is the same. Whichever platform you are using, the text of it will be visible right on the top once you put the backplate in. Unlike the Thermaltake AIOs where just the opposite happened. The long screws will insert and lock properly inside the bracket, so just make sure they flush in properly. After putting the backplate in, take out the A and B spacers and caps out for the AMD platform or B and B spacers and caps out for the intels. Place the longer spacer first and then the metal bracket on top of it. At first I decided to be a little gutsy and didn't care about the orientation the manual suggested. But then I changed it later to devoid myself of the OCD which might hit me later. Then after that just screw the caps in firmly and put the thermal paste on the processor and put the heatsink on top of it. Then put the securing brace and make it rest within the inside slot and then tighten the two screws one by one. Then screw the fan brackets on the fans. You have to do this just once for the 310 and twice for the 510. For the 510, make sure you put the fans in push and pull configuration, otherwise you'd be like, this cooler sucks. Because the heatsink is quite thin, you won't face any sort of ramp clearance issue with any of these air coolers. After that, just put the single fan connector or the two fans with the splitter cable in the CPU fan chassis connector on the motherboard. Now, if you think the installation process was longer than most modern air coolers, then I would say you're absolutely right. But installing a cooler is an affair which most of you have to do only once, so I don't really deduct a lot of points here for coolers and even AIOs, which might or might not need uh, more time installing them as compared to their competition or other air coolers you see in the market. 
The cooler looks nice in the black case with more black stuff inside of it. I honestly do like how it looks overall even without the extra RGB boost performance slapped over it. And luckily it complements the custom sleeve cable design that I got done by Sensei Mods. Do check them out and their website. Now I am going to test the coolers on a Ryzen 9 3900X chip at different power consumption levels. Looking at the average temperatures during the full Cinebench R23 benchmark run test, with the case covers open, the 310 and 510 performed pretty close to each other till the 175 watts mark, where the difference is about 3 degrees Celsius. But do note that these are delta temperatures and the ambient temperatures was around 20 degrees Celsius at the time of me testing both of these air coolers. And as you can notice in these max temperature graphs, both the coolers will do a fine job for processors that can eat up to 100 or 125 watts of power. As even in summers, when you add up to let's say 15 or 20 degrees more to these results, the temperature wouldn't cross 90 degrees Celsius. But the 150 and 175 watt results are not looking good and I wouldn't recommend any of these coolers uh, for processors that can eat up to that many watts of power. On the boxes of both these coolers, they state that the TDP of the 310 is 170 and of the 510 is 180, but clearly they are not performing as per their boxy claims. In gaming during both the shadow of the Tomb Raider and Godfall benchmark tests, the average temperature stayed mostly around 60 degrees Celsius, with fans running pretty silently at around 1200 RPM. As expected for gaming, both of these air coolers will be fine. The idle temperatures were 4 degrees better on the 510 when the Ryzen 9 was at stock settings. And with the default fan curve set, these are the average RPMs at which the fans on the 310 and the two fans on the 510 ran. And it's apparent above the 155 watts mark, the fans had to run to their maximum speed. And yeah, I stated earlier, the bundle fans with these air coolers are pretty exceptional. And that is probably why even when they were running at 100% speed, the noise from them was acceptable. So yeah, pretty decent air coolers. I expected really nothing exceptional from them seeing how compact their heatsink size was on both the models as both the models have the same heatsink and I'm sure most of the work is being done by the fans on them anyway. So if you need a compact, no RGB crap air cooler in your build, then you can definitely consider any of these options. But I wouldn't really want to pair them with anything above the Intel i5s or the Ryzen 5s even, uh, except for maybe I can't say the same for the Intel 12th gen uh, i5s because they can produce a lot of heat and power. But yeah, Thermal Take really needs to check its pricing here if it wants to survive in this market. I do understand that the cooler build quality is far superior to many other cheaper options uh, that I have tested in the past. But then people in the end just care about how a thing performs, how it looks and how much money is it asking for. So yeah, this is about it for this video. If you like my effort, you can consider buying any of these air coolers from the affiliate links, which I will post below. You can also hop onto our Discord server for more chit chat on relevant content. Stay safe humans. That's all for today. MewBot and the 310s, 510s out.